Welcome to the Jamoti Podcast. We are all surrounded by amazing coaches and leaders. So let's get an inside look at not just what they do, but how they do what they do. After all, becoming the best versions of ourselves is Jamoti, just a matter of doing it. Coaches, the Jamoti Podcast is powered by Biology. What's your BSA score? The Biology Skills Assessment is the only verified skills metric endorsed by the NAIA, NJCAA, and a growing number of NCAA coaches to discover and develop the best talent for your team. This four minute, 40 shot test can be taken free today on the Biology mobile app. Elevate your game. Uh, I love getting to talk to coaches at, at high levels that not only are great leaders themselves, but surround themselves with or play against other great leaders. So what's one quality or s- several qualities that you just think are important that, that great leaders have? Oh, man, it's funny. I, I picked these questions and I've, I've had so many things happen between looking at these questions and, and now, and, and I'm sure I had an answer, a different answer at the time. But I, I think one thing that's important um, for leaders is to enable other leaders, right? Like you, you have to, um, for me as a head coach, I want to, one, hire really, really great people um, that, that know what they're doing, they're competent, that, that love people, um, that fit our culture, that, that, that compliment me. But uh, at the same time, I got to be able to, to relinquish control and, and mm-hmm. empower them and allow them to do things. And, and I, think, I think a byproduct of that is the more you pour into your coaches and you enable them to, you trust in them to, to do their job. One, I think there's more ownership that they take in your place. Um, two, I just think, I think for me, like when I have other coaches that are high level coaches in practice, it allows for there not to be a, a dip in practice. So what I mean by that is if we got a two hour practice. It's going to be hard for me to be on, on 10 the whole time, <laughs> yeah. the whole time, but where are you out? Yeah, I can tell you, hey, Coach Sam, I need you to, I need you to get the first ten minutes of practice. I need you to get practice going. I want the energy high. I want us going. I want you to set the mo- set the tone for practice. Then I can jump in and I can go hard for twenty minutes, thirty minutes. My, we can have a defensive segment next, and but it allows for one. I think you as when I when when head coaches and when leaders empower their assistants, it, it it allows them to have a bigger voice when it comes to the team. Um, when it comes to the, the buy-in from the team, the trust in the team with, with not just the assistant coaches, but but everybody. Um, and it, it, it also shows that it shows trust. Like when yeah. a head coach trusts his assistant coach to do their job or her assistant coach to do the job, um, why shouldn't I trust them? And, and so I, I think I think just being somebody that empowers others to, to have success. And I think too, uh, and I'm not the best at it, but I'm, I'm trying to get better. I've tried to empower our, our players to have more of a voice too. I think that you want that same buy-in, that ownership from your players. And so, um, you know, we got to the, the conference championship game this year. We got to the second round of the NCAA tournament this year. And sometimes you don't get to pick those, those shoot-around times. You get some very early shoot-around times and you don't play till 8 o'clock at night. And it's like, I don't think the team wants to go to shoot around, but let me ask them. And before I wouldn't ask them, I would, I would make the decision myself. And I was surprised this year because two times we had a late game, um, but we had a really early shoot around. And I asked the team, I said, look, it's up to you guys. If, if you guys would rather sleep in, let's sleep in. But if you guys want to go to the gym and you want to do the shoot, shoot around, let's do the shoot around. It's only 30 minutes. So we'd be waking up. We may be driving 20 minutes to practice 30 to go back home. And they both times they told me yes. And they're like, well, we got time to sleep. We take, got time to nap during the day. So we'll, we'll nap during the day. And I, I was really caught off guard because I was, was not going to go. And, um, and it made me feel like, okay, we're, we're probably ready for these games. Like yeah. it, it really made me feel good as a head coach that they chose to do it. And I just felt like empowering them in those moments, um, it, it helped with the buying of the team too. So. And the buy-in, they were two really good shoot-arounds for nice. early morning shoot-arounds, and we don't have good early morning shoot-arounds ever. So Man, that, that's pretty genius. If you can not, and you didn't manipulate them in any way there, but if you can get them to make that choice on their own, like if you would have mandated it, just human nature would say, well, because you want me to do this, you're telling me to do this, I yeah. don't want to do this. And, and But yeah, that choice is huge. Let me ask you, you, you said something interesting about giving up control and golly that's just such a hard thing to do 
have you always been that way or was there a time where you transitioned and what what made you do that no i i, I definitely wasn't always that way i think i think anytime <laughs> you take over a program um uh, especially with new new people um you want to you feel like you want to get it right and yeah. you want your hands and everything you want things to be ran a certain way and i think when i got to the point where i had some retention of my staff my staff was really an extension of me they knew they they knew our system they knew what i wanted but they also I, I had enabled them to have voices at least within our meetings and things like that that you know they took off they 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 took whatever they were given and they ran with it they did a great job and and for me it was the more that they did a great job with the stuff that they were given i wanted to continue to give them areas to to improve and to be better and, and eventually you're trying to you're trying to develop other head coaches um yeah. i felt like we started really having success here when i had multiple head coaches within the program um and even though they weren't a head coach by title here they were they were ready to leave here and be head coaches and so um you know Marquise brown he he just accepted the head head coaching job at oklahoma christian university he's going to go there and do a phenomenal job he's been a head coach within this program for the last four or five years um and then i had um jane marie wilson here the year before um who was us three on a staff together she had been with me for three years and in her third year i felt like she was turning the corner as far as being somebody that could be a head coach sooner rather than later and she's somebody that's you know, in her late 20s, mid to late 20s, Coach Brown's 40 now. And so a younger coach and an older coach, but I felt like she was she was somebody that was turning the corner as far as being able to be a head coach. And it showed because last spring she had, th she had I think, three jobs that she was in the mix for a head coaching job. And, and the minute people start calling you, asking you to apply, you're in that ballpark of being a yeah. head coach. She left last spring. She's from D.C. She went back home to Howard to be the recruiting coordinator there, had a great season, went to the tournament, won the first round game. They played that playing game. And then they turned around and had to play South Carolina, the eventual national champs, and uh, ran into a buzzsaw. <laughs> but but I, I think she went there and, and made that place better. Yeah. And and I think that's what for me, you know, as you as you pour into your coaches and you give that, it's that early investment can really reap benefits for you because I felt like I had multiple head coaches that I, I could give them something I knew was going to get done. And it allowed me just to, to stretch and be able to do other things that we weren't yeah. doing before. Like I can be more involved in fundraising. I can be more involved in, in the fan engagement, trying to get, you know, our attendance the last few years has been the prior, I mean, besides the COVID year, our attendance has been the best it's ever been because mm -hmm. we've just been able to get, I've been able to do more things. Um, I mean, I would concentrate on basketball more. You'd be surprised at how much people ask me all the time, like, what do you do during your day? Like, what do you do when it's not basketball season? I'm like, if you only knew all yeah. the stuff behind the scenes that goes to keep the yeah. machine going. Just changing the rules of the game <laughs> on a committee, no big deal. <laughs> but, it, 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 but but people just think that we coach yeah. basketball and, and the 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 mentoring and, and, the, and the academic help and, and the different things that go on behind the scenes. Um, they, I just, I've had some some really great people around me that um you know when you pour into them just tenfold what we got back mm -hmm. as far as um you know the product within our program this the type of coaches we've had here and, and um uh, so that's that's to me what it's all about and, and uh it's 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 very it's made it very tough to replace them uh because uh you, now you have such high expectations and and um but they almost have to start over you know you with, a, with a new over. group yeah and it's and this it's it's the time right now to like we're transitioning to division one. We'll be division one next month. And uh but it, it's also it, it's the clean slate, it allows you to kind of reconfigure some of the things where you now that we're at this place in our program, you're like, well, I think we can get better in certain areas and, and so it's it's a challenge right now, but it, it's fun and, and uh I'm I'm happy for all my former assistant coaches that are having a lot of success right now and hopefully they they really learn something here that they can take into into their next um job opportunities and, and create more leaders for the future so yeah it's a little bit about the lens that you choose to view the, all of these changes by you know like going to yeah. d1 all these coaching changes happening but it's if it's an exciting thing for you you know if you view it that way then i, I think that helps all of us with our approach to whatever we're doing you, you said something about i think 
player ownership, player engagement is something that's talked about a lot. I think assistant coach ownership and engagement is sometimes lost. I don't, I just don't hear that talked about a lot. And, and I think you, you nailed it. How many programs do the players truly view assistant coaches differently than they view the head coach uh, as, as less than, you know, as, as uh, just a different level, obviously about uh, with authority, there's a little bit of truth, but when you enable the coaches like you've done, uh, uh, you get more buying from them, but the players start to view them uh, in a different way, right? I have no, no doubt. I, I would, I think so. Um, <clears throat> and and uh, you know, for me, I think some of this some of this change is good because um, I I get a chance to man get re-energized. I felt like. I felt like, um, well, one, I was very, I've been very comfortable. I've been, I've just been blessed with, like I said, great coaches around me. But it allows me to kind of get back into the details of things, and and that's where, you know, anytime you have huge turnover like this, it, it allows me to, like, I have to go back and talk about the details, and it kind of sharpens me a little bit. And I think, I think too. So from from our player standpoint, that's going to help because some of the like we've had a lot of success in recent years because of when you have success, you're a lot, you're able to get better players and, and get better players. So we won a lot of games on talent, but I think the last couple of years we've kind of missed some steps in the details. And and so this year, just with a new staff coming in, I think I'm going to be able to get back into some of the details that I may have missed with 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 this current team. And and I have a lot of players back that, but I do believe so much that our, our players really um, felt like our staff was uh, a, a really good staff. They could go to anybody for help, that they were going to get real answers, that they were going to be able to get their their issues resolved or, or solved. And, and um, I really feel like they've had some really, really good and genuine relationships with our staff. And I, I think that starts with just empowering our staff and, and making sure that, that our players know that if you're talking to one of the assistant coaches, it's like talking to me. And and, and um, that's it's just worked for us over the years. And, and we'll continue to 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 hire good people and allow them to have a strong voice. And I'm excited. we got a former player coming back into the fold on, on the staff this year that, man, she was such a great player for us. And that's one other thing that I think I've done uh, or that we've done here in, in my time here is we've hired former players. This is going to be our, our fifth former player to join my staff in eight years. Thank you for checking out today's episode. Please take a moment to subscribe to this podcast, share it with your fellow coaches, and find us on social media for what's coming up next on the Jamoti podcast. It's just a matter of doing it.